By 1933, Native Americans were in a deplorable state, which paralleled much of America during the Great Depression. Benjamin Raphael, known as Lone Feather, and former administrator with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, recalls life on the Rosebud Reservation in the 1930s. Quote, We had the most sickening poverty that one could imagine. Tuberculosis was the killer of the Indians. The people on the Pine Ridge Reservation in the Ogala were eating their horses just to survive. Impoverishment was everywhere. The Indian Reorganization Act of the Indian New Deal was enacted in 1934. It tried to reverse the effects of the Dawes Act and the national policy of forced assimilation. The two main goals of the IRA became economic independence and self-determination. But self-determination was never fully realized. It was becoming clear that the Dawes Act and the boarding schools were starving and depopulating communities and eradicating Native American culture. The IRA ended with mixed results, and many tribes never adopted it. But some benefits did come from the legislation. Native American educational reform became the long-lasting impact from the IRA. Boarding schools began closing, community schools were established, but the catch with the IRA was that the federal government granted aid to tribes that adopted it, which provided medical assistance, land, housing, and employment opportunities. Many tribes did not accept it, thinking rationally of past injustices, that this was just another empty promise from Washington, or worse, another institution to break up what little cohesion the tribes had left.